Hi, everybody. Uh, Michael Silbury here, um, event director for Inlet Australia, uh, continuing with our series of discussions with um, industry thought leaders. Uh, today, uh, we have from Salesforce, uh, Joe Delaney, and he's the directory, uh, director of industry strategy, energy and utilities for Australia and New Zealand. I should point out that uh, Salesforce, um, well, we're delighted to have Salesforce as our lead sponsor for the Inlet Australia Leadership Summit Theater. Um, so Joe, uh, welcome. Thanks for having me, Michael. And uh, yeah, look, really, really appreciate the invitation to come and speak to you today and, and um, hugely excited at the opportunity to partner with, uh, with Inlet and the, uh, very much looking forward to the conference in July. So, uh, so thanks again, looking forward to the chat. Yeah, I, I, um, we're excited about July too. We feel there's a lot of pent up demand for a live event and we're really happy to have uh, Salesforce on board and have you on board speaking on one of our panels. So to begin this discussion, um, can we talk just a little bit about the importance of, of a connected future between customers, employees and partners? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's just such a critical time and the pace of the decarbonisation of the electricity sector, as we know in Australia, is just, it's accelerated at a rate over the last couple of years, which very few scenarios and forecasts ever envisaged. And really, you know, that's combined with the fact, yes, it's happening elsewhere, but the rate of decentralisation and behind the meter solar in, in, in Australia, certainly on a per capita basis, is leading the world. And, you know, I, the way I look at this is it places the consumer or the emerging energy prosumer, if you like, at the very center of the new energy value chain. Um, and this, this rapid change is having significant effects, as, as we know, on all sides of the, uh, of, of the electricity market here and grid stability, low wholesale electricity prices, all of these things disrupting business models right across the sector. And if we're to address these issues, if we really get a grip on the system stability um, issues, uh, which are absolutely critical, of course, to the uh, uh, the secure operation of the grid, it's 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 key that we win the consumer's trust and that social license, which is going to be necessary for the increasing increasingly automated demand side flexibility, and of course the journey towards two sided markets and the, how they'll empower consumers. And we know that the regulators also, you know, they're, they're looking increasingly to level the playing field between the, the asset intensive sides of the, uh, of the sector and the transmission distribution network and the consumer level up that playing field. And of course, that's then demanding that utilities are able to understand the customer and communities in order for their own employees to be able to become the trusted advisor and drive that prosumer participation. Um, so, you know, personalized, seamless, efficient um, customer experience across all facets of the industry is, is essential. You use the word trust in there, which I hear a lot about mm. how uh, this industry has to build trust with the uh, consumer. So following that, um, could you tell us a little bit about what, um, what is meant by a customer centric digital transformation? Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely, Michael. And the this new energy paradigm that's, that I've described there really is a driving a need for for a digital first and service anywhere strategy. Utilities being able to to be adaptable to rapidly changing consumer demands. You know, for one example, you know, you look at you look at the very commoditized nature of the relationship with the the customer historically low levels of engagement, and now we're moving towards this show me value, show me insights into my carbon footprint or balancing this cost and comfort. Uh, and and it's, it's just changing, it's accelerating the, uh, the, the pace of change in terms of what the consumer is demanding. Um, we would say, you know, certainly the, the digital transformation necessitates cloud native platforms which can support that necessary agility and faster time to market um, really also key is, is breaking down those organizational and technology silos, harnessing the data from different legacy third party and on-premise systems, combining that customer data with AI to, to really increase the understanding of the customer and their needs and the behaviors. And, and I would say the, the levels of personalization, uh, it, you know, that's really where we're advancing and, you know, surfacing that, that personalized insight in real time to the right employees, or to the right self-service portal and 
and, and creating a seamless, simplified uh, customer experience. You know, we're, we're, if you look at the retailers, it's an existential threat um, as they see more and more disruptive new entrants coming in from outside the sector, you know, from, from, from beneath energy techs, from, from oil and gas super majors, from telcos, all looking to play in this space. Uh, and they're looking to reduce churn by opening new revenue streams, you know, bundling multiple products and services together. Um, and to succeed in, in bundling those products and services together, they, they need a level of convergence and that single view of the customer um, that, that, again, is, is traditionally just uh, has, has, hasn't been there. Uh, even if you look at it from the regulated side, DNSPs traditionally focus on assets rather than consumers. They need to change and drive up a level of customer engagement. And that wasn't previously uh, required to the same level. But it's a, it's difficult, Michael. It's a, it's a huge cultural change it needs to be led from the top. You know, really needs to be focused on the employee experience as well to to bring in that next generation of digital talent. Yeah. So, um, can you uh, give us a few more specifics on what actions utilities need to take, or, um, or what actions are they taking in relation to the customers as we move into a clean energy future? Well, it's probably be useful to pick out a, maybe a, a two or three examples of what we're seeing sort of with, so with some of our key key clients in the sector. And uh, we work, um, as, as many may know, with, with NG, one of our largest sort of global uh, customers. They're present here, obviously, as well. And that's an incredible story of consolidating platforms and systems, breaking down silos, creating a, a single tailor-made approach to solving customer needs. And they're doing that globally, I think it's 24 entities in both retail and CNI, um, commercial industrial. You know, that, that, that's, that's a terrific story. Uh, we, we also work quite closely with Centrica and British Gas, and they're, they're growing their business by automating key processes and adjusting their CNI quote process to reflect real time market data, um, securing contract approvals, and doing this while reducing that overall time to quote. And there's some quite dramatic results in that, so, you know, down from three days in some instances to only three minutes. Um, so, you know, we're seeing some real success there. And if you look at it, maybe a, a different sort of example from, uh, from the, the asset intensive space in the, in the transmission sector, working with national grids to, to deal with the problem we're becoming increasingly familiar with here of, 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 of grid connections as we, as we move from a, uh, an era of a few dozen large scale centralized generators to many hundreds of smaller distributed renewable generators. How do you manage that process? Very manual intensive, needs to much more data driven decision making. And we help National Grid with, uh, with their Connect Now portal, which, uh, which streams line, streamlines the, the process of onboarding connections through a single delivery portal and, and managing that entire end to end experience. So some really sort of exciting opportunities that we're seeing it from some of our, our our key customers. But the one thing that that really is key to that is the ability to to integrate their legacy data into the Salesforce front and middle office platform, uh, give, giving them that greater level of automation and intelligence. So um, as utilities uh, adapt uh, uh, to a new business model, uh, what are some of the basic steps they have to take uh, in your view? Well, I'd say it's, you know, it's, it's getting that balance right, transforming the core and growing and scaling the new. And that's, you know, making that work at the same time is, is obviously a challenge. So we'd say, you know, certainly first prepare that organization for change. And to do that, you're, you're looking to break down those silos I mentioned earlier, removing the process roadblocks. If you're to deliver that, that 360 degree view of the, uh, of the customer, that's, you know, that, that, that's a must. Nurturing the change agents in the business, you know, it's it's them that are going to make or break your success here, um, and then aligning the business and IT stakeholders behind a strategic roadmap, and that strategic roadmap with the customer very much at the centre. Um, I, I, I'd say also absolutely critical is is the choice of technology partners, um, and you know you're looking at uh, that that cloud native platform approach which I mentioned earlier, which will allow you to. To, to, to be fast and agile and change with the pace of your strategic roadmap. Um, and that, the single platform, that doesn't mean you're, you're, you're constantly reinventing and spending money stitching things together as well. Uh, it's allowing you to grow at the pace that the market is moving now. 
And uh, so it's just, it's critically important to work with the, the types of companies that are innovating and operating at the speed with which the, the utility industry needs to move now. Absolutely. So um, final question, um, what, are, what can we expect here in Australia and New Zealand from Salesforce over the next uh, a few years? Yeah, well, look, we're we're hugely excited by uh, by the potential and uh, and what we're doing here already, and 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 what we're we're looking to bring. So, a lot of the audience may not actually realise we're already working with a. a probably over 500 utility and energy clients around the world at the moment. We talked about a couple of examples earlier. Um, I, I, I sort of summarise our overall goal really is, is you know, it's the, the number one customer employee and stakeholder experience platform for energy and utilities customers. And, and, and maybe picking out a few areas of focus, which I think um, will, will, will help to sort of uh, help to answer the question. The, Helping utilities reduce the cost to serve by by going digital across their customer and employee experience, um, that's absolutely critical. Uh, and you know, reducing cost to serve is is uh, and and operational expenditure is I think key across the board. Optimizing asset and field operations uh, is is another one you know that we're we're absolutely uh, uh, absolutely laser focused on. And an emerging area really has been around carbon and uh, carbon reporting as, as net zero requirements become less voluntary and more mandatory, um, actually sort of managing that reporting process end to end with the necessary, with the necessary traceability um, for, for both utilities and of course, through to their CNI customers as well. Um, helping clients open up the, the, the types of high margin new revenue streams, which uh, which I mentioned in terms of the multi multi product bundled offerings that we we talked about, fast time to market, integrated as well in terms of the 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 uh, the uh, in terms of the, the the use case for the for the end user, whether that's sort of bundling up electric vehicle, um, leasing um, uh, leasing the financial insurance with the energy management systems. Um, and, uh, and, and and sort of bundling that together as an offering, or indeed enabling the emerging decentralized energy marketplace. And this sort of this this ecosystem of, of prosumers and new energy services, I think it's just it's so exciting and so critical for for, for where we are here in Australia, Michael. Joe, um, really want to thank you for your time today. Uh, thanks for the kind of the preview of what uh, you'll be talking about uh, in Lit Australia, uh, July 21st. Uh, the event, of course, is July 21st, 22nd in Melbourne. Uh, uh, we're really excited about a live event again. And of course, Salesforce is the uh, spo lead sponsor of the um, In Lit Australia Leadership Summit Theater. And uh, it's going to be quite a, 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 we're going to have a number of really high quality speakers, including two um, experts from the U.S. who will be speaking live but virtually. It'll be the uh, chairman of the California Energy Commission, and there's a lot of parallels of what's happened in California and to what's going on here. And then we have a, a top-notch expert from Texas, well-known Texas uh, consultant, who's going to talk about the grid collapse during the deep freeze uh, in Texas uh, in February. So listen, uh, I really want to thank you for your time. Really eager to see you in July, and um, thanks again to Salesforce to, uh, for sponsoring the event. And as you know, we have a number of other things planned beyond the live event going forward. So thanks again, Joe. Really excited, Michael. Thanks for having me.